guys uh, i welcome you to this class and like i said before the class is about mullerian abnormalities and i'm going to be talking about basically the uh, mullerian abnormalities classification system because that's where the examiners love to confuse you that is the place where they like to ask you questions where you can fumble and where you don't remember things and you confuse and jumble up so in today's class my uh, aim would be to make these classifications easier for you first of all and most important you know there are so many systems uh, even when i was studying i used to get confused which to remember which to forget and which one is more important which one is recent and stuff so i'm trying to first of all uh, i'll try to impress upon you the most important the one which has to be learned and how to be learned and you know what if at all you need to forget which one is you know the one that you can let go which is the latest one which is the older one and how to remember the classifications now as far as diagnosis and treatment is concerned i'll touch upon those topics as well because questions have been asked on those topics as well short notes five marks uh, or so uh, but you do not need to know in length about those procedures at your level you might you're not expected to know all of them but that being said you should at least know the names which i'll be mentioning in this lecture so we have a long way to go guys let's uh, begin with today's lecture and i welcome all of you into the class so i begin with this uh, uh, you know basically we're going to be talking about the diagnosis and treatment and uh, we start with the embryology part just for those students who were not there in my last class in which i spoke in length about the <laughs> development of the female uh, genital tract okay since we are now not concerned with you know the external genitalia we are mostly concerned with the internal one so i'll be focusing on those aspects i told you that the entire female genital tract mostly when i'm talking except for the gonads the gonads are actually the ovaries they are nothing but the intermediate mesoderm okay the gonadal ridge which i spoke about the gonadal ridge is the one which gives away the gonads or the ovaries in females the testes in males when it comes to the development of the tubes the fallopian tubes the uterine fundus the uterus body and the cervix and upper part upper two third of the vagina remember i'm saying upper two third of vagina they are all formed by the paramesonephric duct in the females in males the mesonephric duct is important or the wolfian duct is important in females the paramesonephric duct or the wolerian duct is important and this is the you know by the joining of the two you know i you remember i showed you through videos lovely videos i had so many videos i had in the last lecture uh, so those two sides i now remember what i'm saying two sides paramesonephric ducts they come and they fuse with each other and then with the urogenital sinus lower down again two paramesonephric ducts right right and left they come in between they first fuse with one another and then they fuse with the urogenital sinus so this fusion in between is what causes the uterus and the cervix and the upper part of vagina and upper two third of vagina the lower one third is formed by the urogenital sinus that's all you have to remember so the lower one third of vagina which has got a clinical significance when you're talking about you know the arterial supply or you know the metastasis when it happens especially the you know cervical carcinoma metastasis you talk about upper two third of vagina not the lower one third because embryologically they are different okay so the lower one third of vagina is formed by the urogenital sinus and that's all about it that i wanted to revise now i take you up with the different classification systems based on you know the fusion how much fusion happened how much uterus is formed how much cervix is formed what part of cervix did not form uh, you know what part of part of vagina was not properly formed whether there was during this fusion a septum that remained whether the fusion was incomplete not properly happening there are so many mullerian abnormalities that take place and you know being uh, one of one of the branches being infertility and ever since the advent of laparoscopy and that to diagnostic laparoscopy you have so many of these things coming up and understandably so when you put a laparoscope inside the abdomen so when you see retrospectively neither the ultrasound is very uh, you know uh, diagnostic nor is your hsg very diagnostic but yes laparoscopy combined with hysteroscopy together is almost 90% diagnostic of majority of uh, you know mullerian abnormalities so there are now i'm going to be discussing about three basic classification systems okay all of you who have just joined the class you've not lost anything because now the important stuff is starting 
there are three main classification systems of the mullerian abnormality okay one is the american fertility society the afs which is the you know the oldest one uh, i think we've been studying that before and it's very old and the only problem why these so many other classifications came was because this you know american fertility society afs was not concentrating on all the different you know uh, modalities of uh, what can happen what can go wrong in your in the you know in the in the fusion of the mullerian ducts so all all these things were not included in that and which is the reason why it was criticized to a great extent and finally now asrm again see this was american this is also american american fertility society american society for reproductive medicine asrm has now taken up the responsibility and a recent 2021 uh, classification system has just come which encompasses almost 90 90% of all mullerian abnormalities which i know and i've seen so far and which are there actually obviously these people have they research a lot uh, you know and they come out with these different kind of uh, classification system so one i've spoken about afs one i spoke about asrm both are american then there is one more system which is to be pondered over which is european system the eshre the, the european society for health and reproductive medicine or reproductive uh, system is eshre so eshre in which what happens is that even this european society has come up with a classification system and you know every country has their own you know obstetrics and gynecology society we also have one but the whole world does not follow these norms we are following the norms of certain specific countries for the fact that they've done heavy research on that they've done very honest and very uh, you know long term work in that there is no fabrication of any detail and they've tried to come up with these recommendations which are followed by the entire world not just by india so which is reason why we're talking only about two countries mostly america and the european countries uh, we do not have uh, you know the rcog uh, coming up with these uh, different uh, recommendations or classification system we have in fact extra coming up right so which is responsible for the fertility society uh, and that come, came up with a classification now i'll show you two uh, slides one by one okay they are the classification is the same but you tell me whether this slide or this slide through which slide do you understand and remember better through which slide do you understand and remember better is it through this slide it's saying the same thing class 1 there is segmental hypoplasia it could be vaginal it could be cervical it could be fundal it could be anything but it's basically hypoplastic uterus cervix vagina anything or just tubes right So it's class one. Class two is uniconvy. But I feel this is a better slide for me to teach you <clears throat> this one. Why? Because it's pictorial. You tend to remember better. Okay. So let's take up this first. This was nothing but a classification of the American Fertility Society (AFS). Okay. And here I'm talking about the class one, two, three, four classification. And now please pay attention because towards the end we are going to have a quiz, and I would want all of you to participate. be it right or wrong just make your answers i'll solve it with you and we'll just compare with these slides whether we were right or we were wrong so this can be your oski question remember so please pay attention and try to memorize it with me so class 1 right class 1 in afs now these two are going to get confusing because once you remember afs suddenly will come european and it will change lots of things so i'll tell you the trick to memorize So class one in AFS is hypoplasia. This this is very proper, you know. Class one में there is nothing. Class two में there is something. Class three में there is doubling. Diadelph is biconvex, and then starts becoming normal. Sub septate, which is almost normal. Arcuate, even more normal. And towards the end, some vestigial thing like DES, which is diethyl silvestrol rented drug abnormality, which is a T-shaped uterus. So. i'm just giving you an overview let's start with step by step so class 1 nothing there is nothing only okay it could be vaginal agenesis it could be cervical agenesis it could be a uterine agenesis it could be just the fundal agenesis it could be you know the fallopian tube agenesis the multiple type any kind of agenesis goes under class 1 finish then we go to class 2 there is something at least there is one one horn of the uterus uniconvex okay so uniconvex uterus might come with another horn which could have a communicating cavity which could have a non communicating cavity which could have no cavity at all and there could be no horn at all so a b c d remember that because even that i'm going to ask you 
do what A is to B, what it is to C, to to D. So to A, there is there is both. There is horn and there is communicating cavity, which is okay. To uh, to B, there is horn but no communication with it. Three, there is no cavity only. What communication are you talking about? And then four is no horn. Forget about cavity. Forget about communication. Right? A, B, C. So it's very simple. Class three is just uterine diadelphus. Now, diadelphus uterus and biconvent uterus, people have a lot of confusion. Even I had when I was uh, studying. It's very simple. Mostly, just remember, uterine diadelphus has two separate uterus. Two separate uterus with a, you know, with their own cervix and with their own cavity, and totally different with their own tubes and their own things. So two different uterus. Okay, two separate uterus. By convert the same two uterus, they are joined together. They might be completely joined, or they could be partially, you know, joined. Uh, you know, in case of complete by convert uterus, is that the indentation is a little more deep. It's almost like diadelphus. Okay, but don't get confused. There's one cervix. Okay, they don't have a separate channel for cervix. Okay, by convert uterus complete means almost the indent is like it's like almost like a diadelphus uterus, but partial is like just hardly fused in between. Almost like an, uh, you know, arcuate uterus kinds, and then comes septate uterus. Very common, very very common in infertility practice. You see, see pretty often. In the, uh, again, you have complete partial, complete partial. So by convert complete A, partial B. In the similar way, septate complete is A and partial is B. And then arcuate uterus. Uh, there is nothing actually in arcuate uterus. Slightly, the you know the the, the dome, the fundus is slightly more con convex when you see the, uh, so see through the, uh, through the hysteroscope. It's uh, even in HSG sometimes you can see, but usually it is missed arcuate uterus or overdiagnosed. And then comes last, like I said, vestigial. Don't see it very often. T shaped cavity, and you'll not be able to appreciate also even if it's a T shaped cavity. So that's test for you. That is diethyl stilpistrol drug related problem. I think you have got something. So, what, what did I tell you? It's easy to remember three, four stages. There's nothing. Stage one, stage two, there's something. One uterus or one uterine horn is there. Stage three, there's doubling. And then start stage four, uh, sorry, three and four is doubling. And then five, six, and almost the uterus goes to normal. So this was about the AFS system, guys. Do not confuse. See it again and again. And remember, try to remember. I've, you know, pasted these two slides on your, um, in, in my channel also for you to just go back and see it again and again. You can take that out in your mobile and you can check it out every time I ask you a question. Because in that sense, you know, I know that it will be like straight, seeing it straight away. But that will just wire the connections to your mind. That's what I'm, my class is all about. I'm just trying for you to just wire the connection so that at least something comes out of your mind when this uh, slide is shown to you in your OSCE exams.